Welcome to the good life. Oh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. Good morning, good morning, good morning, welcome and welcome to the good life with me, Eileen. We are here on Money Monday, and it is a Money Monday. We can all start, you know, enjoying the money in our pockets, and hopefully for the next eight years, not hopefully, it will be growing in the state of Louisiana. If y'all didn't think I was happy this morning, now you know I'm happy, because it is definitely the good life in the state of Louisiana. I've been talking about turning Louisiana blue. But I will say this, Louisiana is purple today because it took a joined effort of everyone in the state just putting Louisiana values, putting Louisiana first and doing what's best for everyone. And Louisiana is purple this morning. And so I am so excited. I am so blessed. I have my partner in politics on the line, Telly Medina. Telly, I'm so excited. I don't know what to do with myself this morning. How are you? I'm at Waffle House with Carlos Hampton, seeing if I get some free grits and eggs. He don't want to say, I know I, I, I won two races, lost one, so I need some money, seeing if Pam's construction. He was Shout out so to Black good. Business to help me with some waffles at Waffle House on Joe DeGaulle. They got a man in here named Derek. He's a server at the Waffle House on Joe DeGaulle. <laughs> Everybody listening on the radio this morning, if you come to this Waffle House, please do not let this man be your server. <laughs> Well, um, I don't know about Derek, but I will say we also have a special co-host in the studio with us this morning. We have Mr. Mason Harrison. Good morning. He's the man with the plan. He does. Um, he stops in for a lot of politics and stuff, and so I'm so excited to have him here with me this Monday because he was actually my partner on <laughs> yeah. Saturday night at the John Bell Edwards um election campaign yeah. poll watch party. We were doing it big over there. It was Pat, Telly, I don't, yeah. where were you for the poll watch? Where were you watching it? You had a lot going on. I couldn't hear you. Sit up where were you watching the poll results? I was at my campaign office. Which, I mean, you know, you, you, you're you the man for so many people, so. I'm not the man for so many people, but <laughs> let, me, let me say this. I'm just playing. I talked to a great deal of people mm -hmm. uh, about the election, asked them what, what, what was on their mind. And the initially, I guess the most important thing that someone came up with was that, you know, now some 200,000 people may have a chance to get health care. Exactly. If anything that is significant in this state, that may be the most important thing that can happen under a John Bell Lewis administration. Well, the, actually, what, what I want to do for this first segment this morning is kind of go through all of the races and who won and what that means for those areas and those districts. And then the second segment, we're really going to dive into what it means for Louisiana with having John Bell Edwards as governor. What, you know, major shifts between um, the Republican policies and his policies that will really change. And just like you said, Medicaid expansion will be like one of the hugest things and actually it was a national yeah. um it was a national headline that you know i think it was 1.1 1 .1 million people in louisiana voted for have medicaid expansion because that's how many people voted in the election mm -hmm. you know and it's it's a really big deal so we're going to um delve into that a little bit later but just what does john bell edwards winning look like and i'm like i'm i'm going through it but I'm just talking about for the New Orleans area, we had a 38.5% turnout, which is really a huge jump compared to what it had been looking like. You know, I think a lot of folks, um, including the Secretary of State, lamented the fact that there weren't more people turning out. But um, I think that that figure is pretty good uh, for, um, I guess, what one might call an off-year election. Right. Um, and uh, I, I am not surprised by that, and I think that it is uh, significant. There were some estimates that we'd go as high as 42, 43 mm percent. -hmm. So I was a little disappointed by that. I would have liked that. Yeah. You know, we want everybody to participate. But at the end of the day, um, the results are good for the entire state, whether folks realize it or not. Now, maybe not for the business lobby <laughs> uh, lobby and those folks. They're a little bit concerned in the charter school folks. But at the end of the day, for the folks um, at, the, at the sort of the bottom end of the socioeconomic ladder, it's a good day for those folks. And unfortunately, we have a lot of those in the state of Louisiana. Right. Telly, what do you think about the turnout? Telly? A lot of our men at the bottom of the economic ladder, we all know he's rich. <laughs> Secondly, uh, with that said, I think that to get to 40 percent turnout would be incredible, right? And I think in a race that was so divisive uh, and looking at the type of campaign that Senator Vitter uh, ran even at the end. A lot of people may have not seen, but there was a, a push card. No, there was a mail piece that said President Obama 
thanks you for not voting in the primary. And he sent that out to Republicans who didn't vote. I mean, I think, you know, within the state <laughs> and looking at it and all segmented. I don't know if y'all saw that piece, but that actually happened. No. Um, yeah, I would have to get, take a picture of it, get it from somebody, take a picture and send it to you. That, um, you know, sometimes uh, within races, uh, things can heat up. And the thing with Senator Vitter and looking at the PAC money from the outside, which may have not always worked for Democrats, in this case, actually did. So. Right. But I will say this for the entire state of Louisiana, I gave you Orleans Parish numbers a minute ago, but for the entire state, it was thirty nine point seven percent turnout. Yeah. Which is, you know, that's a, a real big push. I think everyone really started to realize how important this election was and what it was going to reflect on our future. And not just for the state of Louisiana, the entire nation was looking at this governor's race. Um, what do you two gentlemen think about that? How what an impact this race made for the, the country? Well, I would say that um, I think it's interesting for the Democratic Party, not only at the state level, but also the national level, right? So thankfully, the DGA, the Democratic Governors Association, decided to play uh, in this, and they dropped about $1.2 million into this. Thank you this. very much. We appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, there was some question about whether or not they, they'd come down, but they did and sent some staffers as well. You know, I think it's interesting. What does the Democratic Party nationally do now and see that, you know, what we can actually play in uh, what, you know, folks are calling red states. When Howard Dean was national chair, he had this 50 state strategy about getting in folks who were conservative Democrats in areas where they could win. And so there are many different elements to this race. Uh, David Bitter's uh, candidacy, you know, obviously, I think if John Doe was going to be in a runoff, probably the best candidate he could have had. Right. They were like, please, Vitter, <laughs> right. please, Vitter, please, please. His negatives Vitter. were so high. Uh, the Republican Party, of course, has come out with a statement saying, hey, look, this is an anomaly, so to speak. Um, our brand is very, very strong. Uh, I, I think, though, there were, even though there were many factors, I think it's actually a win for uh, conservative uh, values in this state, whether you agree with them or not. Right. John Bell is actually you know, very conservative. Elsewhere, he might be a Republican. Um, but what, 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 what is the, – the, the theme throughout all of this is the economics, right? So the Democratic Party for the past 50 or 60 years has all been about economic populism. And obviously that is the message that he talked about. Uh, we saw that in the 6th congressional district a few cycles ago, uh, you had a guy, McAllister, who mm. won that congressional seat. A lot of it was talking about Medicaid expansion. So Louisiana, Republican or not, remains a sort of populist state from the long era. And these types of things play very, very well here for a variety of reasons. Right. And he was able to capitalize on that, not to mention he had a very weak opponent. So right. nationally, what does it mean? Well, you know, what are the Democrats going to do? How do they find candidates in certain parts of the South and other places that can win based upon these economic issues? I mean, there are three fights in politics. There's the fiscal wars, the social wars, and sort of these like the racial wars, right? Right. Republicans win two out of three. They're going to win on the social issues, and they'll win when they start that southern strategy playing the race card. But on economics, Democrats win consistently for obvious reasons. So how do you blunt those other two factors of uh, American politics and win on these economic issues? And clearly he's done that. And so what do Democrats have to do? Well, they've got to recruit candidates. And in John Bell, they couldn't have had a better candidate. Right. You've got right, a military right. officer, Army Rangers. He's conservative on all the issues that matter to a lot of people in this state. And, I mean, his record – Almost impeachable. I mean, what did they have and on this guy? They tried to attach him, teacher. right? And they tried to attach him to Barack. It's the best they could do, right? Well, it doesn't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. Telly, what are your thoughts? Uh, if you ever met John Bell and you know him and have had any conversation, the truth of the matter is he's just a good man, mm -hmm. and he will be a person that you will want to lead you. You're not going to always agree with him. I don't want every African-American that's in the nuance to think that John Bell is going to be with us on every single issue. But the difference is, can you be fair? And if you can't be with me, just tell me why. Right. Just tell, no, no, I'm not doing that, and this is the reason why. Um, I think that the second part of it is, what does this do? Because I think by having a race that was so handedly a loss for Senator Vitter, now I'm not running for re-election. Hello. Well, then now, what happens with the chess pieces that moves is, is Scott in jail running? He said that he was running. Now I heard something two nights ago that he is not going to run. He's going to run for Bustani because Bustani is going to run. Is Fleming going to run? Uh, is Mayor Miss Landrew uh, going to be in the Senate race? Uh, can a Democrat, can another Democrat who comes from New Orleans win uh, a Senate race when uh, Senator Landrew, the sister, uh, you know, lost previously. Uh, how you look at that, and more importantly, 
are we now in place for the 2016 presidential election as it relates to whoever will be the Democratic nominee? Uh, Bill Clinton won here twice. Uh, if Senator Clinton, for example, is the nominee, will she come and try to invest dollars into a state that now has a Democratic governor? Those are broad but are very varying issues that are going to be significant in the next few months. Don't you think that this election kind of put Louisiana back in the mix? We had just been tossed to the side as a red state for so long, and we just kind of got lumped in the south for so long. Just like, oh, they go with the rest of them. They kind of go with the flow. It's like, oh, wait, Louisianans, you know, have their own mindset. You know, it can sway both ways. We need to start paying more attention to Louisiana. I think they had just kind of, you know, tossed us to a side for a little while, and now it's like, wait, you know what? We need to start paying attention to Louisiana. We need to, you know, really kind of listen. I think, they, I think, didn't ha- they weren't doing that, in my opinion. Well, and they were not, and I would say for good reason. <laughs> but I mean, right. for <laughs> um, outside of party label, candidates matter, personalities matter, mm-hmm. right? And so if you're looking at the national level and you know, assuming that Secretary Clinton becomes the Democratic nominee, uh, it really depends upon who she's running against, right? right. And right now I don't – Let it be Trump. Go ahead. <laughs> right now I don't see any of the folks on – uh, the Republican side of the aisle for that that Louisiana voters would abandon for Secretary Clinton. Um, she is a Clinton. There's a lot of baggage there, um, for better or for worse. And uh, at this stage of the game, I think it will be tough sledding for her. And you know, I certainly wouldn't recommend a whole lot of investment in Louisiana. But hey, we'll see what happens. Hey now, hey now. Listen. I just don't see it. I, I really don't. Telly, I know you're going to be straight. So Telly, what's your thoughts on that? Um, are we in play? I think we got to see how this administration starts to play out, uh, what John Bell is going to do after we get past Mardi Gras and we have a special session. Mm-hmm. He's named the chief of staff and Senator Ben Nevers, keep, State Senator Ben Nevers, who's leaving out, uh, who was actually the person uh, who introduced the affordable health uh, care on the Senate side. Good man from Franklinton, my mama's hometown. I think <laughs> um, in looking at the individuals that he has put, uh, in leadership as his transition team of the six people he named, including Sharon Weston Broom and uh, 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 Chef New Norman. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how things formalize and what happens during the legislative session. The legislative session will give a lot of caveat into how we plug this one, this $1.6 billion budget hole. We think we have the, the, the six, but we still need the billion. Um, and what's going to happen going into next year and how, how the administration plays out. I think although we're very happy for John Bell to become governor, I mean, there's not a lot of money for him to do things with. And you know we like to get things done. And I think right now he's just kind of back against the wall trying to manage uh, our finances. That's going to play a big part into, you know, how he's able to, to uh, uh, you know, transition that into bringing, you know, outside people in that may be able to look at us and say, okay, we can do something here nationally uh, for a Democratic candidate. Do you uh, all – wait, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, and no, I, I just, and I, I'm just simply saying that that book, uh, that, that, that part of the, the chapter hasn't yet to be written. Right. And I am here today on Money Monday with my co-host and my partner in politics, Telly Medina, of course. And we have a special co-host today, uh, Mason Harrison, with uh, some political overview. Um, We're discussing the candidates in the new race. And do you all kind of see like this is a little bit kind of like when Obama took office, like there was so much that needed to be done. He kind of had to get put everything in order before he could kind of move forward. So it's like don't expect Everything to just do a turnaround, you know, kind of like let him do some spring cleaning first, and then you'll start seeing some turnaround. I think that folks in Louisiana, particularly those on the Democratic side, are educated enough to know that um, things aren't going to happen with the waving of a wand. Right? right. We're a very conservative state, and so there are a lot of things that that he's going to have to do in terms of working with. And then um, with a the Republican yeah, legislature. Absolutely, a lot of things he's going to have to do uh, to work with those folks. I do think that Medicaid expansion. You know, and figuring out, you know, how do we come up with those matching dollars? I do think that is more than possible. I think that there are enough Republicans in this state who see that as something that they can work with. You know, as long as we have a model where, you know, according to their worldview, you know, we're not losing money and things of that nature, I do think that's possible. Um, I know we're going to talk about more about that later. Yeah. Uh, there are other things like, you know, raising the minimum wage that might be tough sledding, uh, things of that nature. But, you know, 
as as we all know, political honeymoons are very short lived. <laughs> exactly. And so, depending upon as we look at 2016 and other and other you know coming up races, it really depends upon how he is able to um, sort of brand himself and get his message out and and move those policies. Because it's one thing to be elected, right? It's one thing to you know give someone the benefit of the doubt, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, and have all this goodwill. But once you start pushing policies, well, then it starts to get nasty. So we'll have to see how he manages that. We'll see that. Telly, do you think it's kind of the same reflection as when President Obama took office, where he had a lot of cleaning up to do? Yeah, I mean, he has a lot of cleaning up to do, but he goes to the 105 people on the House side. I think 64 might be Republican. Uh, On the Senate side of those 39, maybe 26 of them are going to be Republican. But John Bell is a conservative guy. He can work with people. But as Mason said, when policy gets involved, then is where things get divisive. Um, I don't think John Bell is going to have much of a honeymoon. I think mm-hmm. uh, once we get to the session and we start talking. Once we get and we start talking, what? Well, you know, I'll jump in and say, you know, I'll dovetail, I'll dovetail off of that and say, yeah, that the honeymoon might be short-lived. And, you know, once – let's just take a look at when President Obama won in 2008. You know, I mean, there were well-wishers from, from all over, even folks on the con- conservative side of the aisle. Right. And I thought, wow, this, you know, this is great. And then once we get into the Affordable Care Act, the tone and the tenor <laughs> changed incredibly. I mean, yeah. it, it just it, – it got nasty. It was, it was not just about, I don't d- d- agree with this. Now you are a Nazi sympathizer. Now you're right. a fascist. <laughs> right. I don't know that we'll see that here in Louisiana, but – um, it, it will not be pleasant as we move into the session because it's, it, it, you can't just be elected and not put your policies in place. Right. Elections have consequences. And we're going to we're going to talk about those policies when we come back from the break. We are here on Money Monday. We just had a large election. We're very yeah. excited. Louisiana is purple today, so we're going to bring everyone back to the table. We're going to you know start moving Louisiana forward and start tackling these policies. And we'll get back into that on Money Monday when we get right back. Stay tuned. How much insurance is enough? What kind of insurance should I purchase? What company should I choose? To get answers to these questions, tune in each Monday from 2 to 3 p.m. to Insurance Concepts and Planning in the 21st Century. Brought to you by the Underwriters Group on WBOK 1230 AM. Real talk for real time. LNR Security provides the good life. They make their mark in the security arena by providing excellent security services for more than 35 years and are licensed in more than 13 states. LNR Security's team comes with a wealth of experience from the military, law enforcement, and law enforcement training. Their personnel is comprised of more than 200 employees trained in video monitoring, special event services, convention services, armed and unarmed security guards, ticket takers, executive security, personal bodyguards, hall monitors, and critical infrastructure personnel that are TSA trained. LNR security services are provided on a 24-hour basis and have expanded to the newest technology, including video monitoring. Find them on the web at www.lrsecurity.com or call them today at 504-943-3191. Again, that number is 504-943-3191. Live the good life with LNR security today. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694 with a three-class starter pack starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Hello? I need help. 
My hair is a mess and my man texts me telling me to be ready for eight. He has a surprise. What am I going to do? My stylist takes forever. I got you. Call Ringlet Salon. I just left there. Where? Ringlet Salon. They took me within minutes and had me in and out in no time. Very professional and I scheduled online at ringlets.com. For real? Girl, for real. Does Ringlet Salon hook up your roots? Looks like I got a perm and you know I'm anti-chemicals. Ringlet Salon has my hair soft and bouncy. I'm getting the Brazilian blowout express next week it eliminates frizz for six weeks six weeks okay i'm all about ringlet salon where are they located ringlets has two locations one at 4712 paris avenue and one in the hilton hotel on the river that location validates parking for four hours and is open on sunday perfect for a working woman like me that's all i needed to know i'm gonna be fresh for my man you will if you schedule your appointment at ringlets.com that's r-i-n-g-l-e-t-t-s dot Bye. Go and make my appointment with Ringlet Salon now. You're on the move and so is your bank. Liberty Bank now offers you the power to manage your money from the palm of your hand with mobile banking with Liberty Bank. Whether you need to check balances, transfer money, or view transactions, mobile banking at Liberty Bank allows convenient and secure access to your money. Enroll today at www.LibertyBank.net and download our mobile app. You can mobile bank at Liberty Bank to keep the power in your hands. Liberty Bank, there's freedom here. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. It's almost that time again, Bayou Classic time, and tickets are on sale now. Make sure you're in New Orleans as the Southern Jaguars and Grambling Tigers take over the Crescent City for the biggest classic weekend in the country. And who will take home the new trophy for the first time? You need to be there to find out who. It starts Thursday, November 26th at the Bayou Classic Thanksgiving Day Parade. On Friday, see the ultimate battle of the bands and Greek show. And on Saturday, the teams go head-to-head on the field at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Don't miss the 42nd Annual Bayou Classic in November. Visit MyBayouClassic.com for more information and to purchase tickets. WBOK 1230 AM. The People's Station. Welcome to the good life. Uh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Money Monday, and it is a great Monday. I am so excited. If you all have been listening to us talk for the past five, six months, you're tired of hearing it. Louisiana is now purple. I did say purple. It's not blue. It's not red. It's purple. We have come together. We have put Louisiana first, and we have made the best decision for everyone involved. And we have John Bell Edwards as our governor-elect. We have made national news, world news, and I'm doing a cartwheel in the studio right now. (laughs) (laughs) I am joined in studio this morning with my partner in politics. I have Telly Medina on the phone. He's the man with the plan. I have also a special co-host this morning, Mason Harrison, who um, is one of our political um, contributors for WBOK and just always make sure that we are on point. So I'm excited to have these two gentlemen, these great minds, um, to deliver some information information for us. We were kind of discussing different aspects of the politics, but I really want to delve into what is going to change in Louisiana. So actually, I want to open the lines right now. 504-260-9265. 504-260-9265. What are those issues that are plaguing our state that you really feel like need some attention that, you know, will get a turnaround or more attention with the new governor? Um, 504-260-9265, 504-260-9265. Let's talk about it. And we always talk about stuff during break, and I'm going to yeah. bring it to the table right now because this is one of the big ones for me. Um, and, Telly, I'm sure you can uh, feel this one. I am. I have a, a company, Carter Business Development, and I've dealt and I've worked for Louisiana Minority Supplier Development Company. I know the, um, the le- call letters have changed at this point, but it's about – Getting minority businesses, and not just blacks, but of course we're we're concerned right. about ourselves as well. But you know, minorities a seat at the table, making sure that we have the same, um, I don't want to say the same, you know, foot in the door like everybody else. And so, you know, on in Orleans Parish, we have, or New Orleans, I should say, we have well, Orleans Parish, we have the DBE. 
um, percentages. Mm-hmm. And I think that we should make sure that we get those on a state level as well. I think it's very important. And I think now we have a governor who would be open to having that conversation, whereas for the past eight years, it was just not even a topic that could be brought to the table because, well, anyway, that's the past. That's yesterday. We're talking about today and moving forward. So, uh, Telly, what do you think about, you know, the state getting a DBE percentage? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah, I'm bringing it big, the big guns. You know, y'all want, I want to talk about what could change for the state. <laughs> we have look. Exactly. But you know what? This is a good life. And you know what? We got out and we voted and we mm-hmm. made sure that, you know, our voices were heard. So now that we made sure our voices were heard, because the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Isn't that what we've talked about? Block voting. And, and the black community came out and voted. And so we need to do things that are make sure that our community is heard and that we get some dollars flowing in our community so that economic development is, you know, equally spread across the board. Okay. So and this is something that we're interested I'll give in. give you the black side of me and then I'll give you the lobbyist side of me. Okay, give me the black side of you first. <laughs> Since the black, I, the, side, the black side of me would say... Um, we have the Hudson Initiative at the state level, which isn't as, as stringent as needs be. Uh, we do not have a DBE program. In the city of New Orleans, it's 35%. Uh, nationally, we do about 23%, but we still see a lag in contracts, and these are things that we know. On, on the state level, I would like to say that at least if we started off with a pilot program, and I know this may sound, you know, minimal, and saying that we have to look across the border. There's a commission, and, of course, there's always a commission to be able to study something, to be able to say let's look at specific contracting opportunities and that not be good faith efforts, but look at transportation contracts, construction contracts, uh, marketing uh, and materials, printing, toilet tissue, whatever those things may be in order to get fair and in the door. And I think that it's possible. That's the black side of me. Now let's look at the lobbyists, John Bell Lewis. New administration, four years. Usually the things that you want to do that are specific usually happen in your second four years. I I don't know what no money in the coffers and knowing that Republicans are going to attack John Bell, that he is going to have an uphill battle probably in four years, unless he's that incredible, and I pray that that happens. Of course. But is that <laughs> something that I would take on right now? I would not. Um, I think you got to get some solid, small hanging fruit things out of the way so that people feel comfortable with your leadership and your style. And then you quietly start to put together something uh, and say that this is what I'm going to do. And you give somebody, you give this piece of the state something, you give this piece of the state something, you put all the pieces in place. So everyone feels like they're eating, and then you gradually bring this along. Mm-hmm. This is not something that you're going to force to And as much as people like to say, well, you should just be able to do it. Baton Rouge does not work that way. And life <laughs> don't just work that way. You don't just force nothing on somebody and assume that this is going to happen, even though it is what is right. right. Uh, so for me being in Baton Rouge, would we'll love to see it. think that it would be a dramatic turn uh, for three, months, three, three million plus people that are in this state. But I don't have the confidence yet that it's something that we can move on, say, for example, in the first year of the administration. Yeah, I would agree. I think that, you know, he doesn't exactly have a mandate for that because he didn't run on that issue. But I think given the fact that, you know, black voters turned out uh, in the primary and in the runoff and the way that we did, I think it all boils down to jobs and contracts. And anyone who says otherwise is either naive or they're lying. But that is what politics is all about, is the jockeying into position to control resources. Always has been, from storing grain in ancient Egypt to now. And this is an opportunity for folks to say, hey, this is what we need. And so in terms of a program, yeah, I mean, that's going to be difficult. But it's also something as simple as cabinet-level positions and what contracts are available. There's no reason why this uh, his administration can't look like Louisiana. And in his victory speech, you know, he promised that. And so it's important for folks to hold his feet uh, to the fire. And yes, in four years, it will be tough sledding for him. And so it benefits him to do the things that he says he's going to do in terms of diversity, right? right. It, it benefits uh, him in a lot of ways. But at the end of the day, it's the people who put him in office who have to demand that. So who are those advocates? What do those folks look like? Us. I have no idea. But I mean, in the sense that, so, you know, not the single mother who's got, you know, three children, she's got to go to work. I mean, you know, 40 hour work week really puts people out of, you know, politics unless that is what you do for a living, right? You know, people's, you know, they've got a mortgage, they've got a car, they're, they're underwater when it comes to their, their child's uh, tuition. So showing up on Saturday to vote, 
for some folks, it's about it for the next four years or the next two years, whatever the case may be. And you mm-hmm. can feel however you want to about that. But that's the reality for a lot of folks. So for the people who do this for a living, who represent the people who are underserved in this state, exactly. who are those folks? What do they look like? And what message are they peddling? Because, you know, oftentimes nonprofits and so-called activists, they're there for their own contracts and their own benefit, mm-hmm. but they might not be there for the benefit of the broader electors. That's also important. Absolutely. Telly, thoughts? Absolutely true. Um, we want to be able uh, – the mandate is the hard work. Uh, because my lobbying style and I look at how things happen in Baton Rouge are for my friends who are legislators. In fact, I just missed a call from State Rep. Ted James, who are very, you know, who used to work in revenue and in economic development. So I think the big telltale sign of how you get things done, appoint someone to one of those positions that black folk, women can work with, mm-hmm. that they have a previous relationship with. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of what happens, I can't blame John Bell for everything that's happening in state government on a day-to-day basis. Oh, Mr. Governor, why didn't that road get paved on Highway 90? I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I got somebody to do that job. But what Mason is saying, let's build on that and say, okay, well, if it's something around DBE, let me hire somebody like an Irene Carter, who did it, who people in the community know. And if she doesn't know the people, if she just knows people in New Orleans, then we need her to travel to Monroe, Shreveport, Alexandria, places that have large pockets of African Americans. Listen, um, on women, listen to what they have to say, and then let's move on some of the things that are already in place in state government. Let's not necessarily make them new policy. Mm. There's always stuff that's on the books. In 2012, we did a, a local hire contract in that. For, 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 for opportunities that may happen during disasters. We are always having something that's going on, whether it's a rainstorm or a hurricane. That's a small thing, but let's look at what we have in place and enforce those things and put people in position that you can work with uh, that may get things done. Right. Uh, tell Representative James to stop calling you and call in at WBOK, 504-260-9265, 504-260-9265. If not today, we'll get him on next week. He just doesn't know it yet. Um, with regards to Louisiana Medicaid expansion, yeah. you know, that's been big news, and it's actually made national news as well. They said Louisiana voters voted for Medicaid expansion in John Bell Edwards. What do you all think about that issue? Well, John Bell wasn't shy about that. He wasn't you know, shy about I, that. Uh, there was no equivocation there. He said, listen, you know, I support this. This is what we need. And so at the end of the day, you know, regardless of what, you know, progressives in this state might think about, you know, his positions on other issues. Because but, I don't really think this was a Republican or Democratic issue because they've had Republican governors that have accepted it. Yeah. I think it's it's a moral issue. Kasich in, um, in Ohio, you know, for example, said that, you know, and he used his Christian faith to sort of, you know, explain, you know, taking care of the poor and right. you know, things of this nature. Um, but by and large, you know, Republicans have sort of philosophical differences when it comes to, you know, expanding government services, and then that's all well and good. But at the end of the day, you know, we've got, by some estimates, four. But if we're Christians, aren't we supposed to take care of those who can't take care of themselves? I'm serious. I'm not trying to be funny. And I'm, it's not about a, a, a Republican or Democratic issue for me. It's about we, aren't we supposed to help take care of those who can't take care of themselves? I mean, it's, it's a Christian issue. Well, and aren't we, aren't the, we, aren't, I mean, you know, at the and end I mean, day. and if it's not, I don't want to say a Christian issue because everyone, you can be spiritual, but mm-hmm. even if you're spiritual or, you know, empathetic, caring, that's what we tout on the, the good life, you know, love, compassion, tolerance, understanding, you know, reach out to those who can't help themselves. And if you have a program that can offer those types of things, why would we not do that? Telly? Ooh, Ooh um, yes. I like to bring it hard this morning. You, 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 you in the mood this morning. I right? am. That's what the good well, life's that, all about. They can play around if they I, want to. I understand. I, I will say that. Uh, I will say for, for my biblical and uh, principles, uh, it is important that we help people who need help. Uh, and whether those are young people, old people, uh, military veterans, uh, uh, or otherwise, um, we need Medicaid expansion because it's the humane and it is the uh, right thing to do. Um, Ted James said he'll call in 15 minutes if you're still on. He's with a client. But, <laughs> but, but with, with that said, because it's the right thing to do, um, if we can take care of the individuals and give them preventative health care before they go into an emergency mm-hmm. room, then we should not have higher health care costs. That isn't going to be a swap to help each and every person. But if Mason has a cold and he has it for a week and he doesn't choose to go because he doesn't have health care, and then now it's becoming more of a respiratory issue, 
and then two days later we see Mason and he can't breathe, well, now he has to go to the emergency room. Maybe he could have went to urgent care if you can afford it or a primary health care physician if your copay was $15, $25, $35 and been able to got some med- medicines or put, put on a breathalyzer so we can deal with issues right then and there. If the statistic is true in this country that 60 to 65% of the homeless population are individuals who served in the military, then as a country, clearly we aren't, doing, we aren't following biblical principles. Mm-hmm. But as I said before on this show, I've been on a state center side where we have, you know, had to, you know, say that the, sung the national anthem, sometimes put our hand across our heart to the flag, say prayer, and then voted against equal pay for women. We right. have things that are substantially wrong, Mason and Eileen, uh, within our state, and we need to be more uh, uh, straightforward about how we're going to try to solve some of those issues with sound policy. And hopefully, uh, in this administration, we'll be able to do some of that. And uh, I wasn't expecting to have the whole show about this, but we are. So stay t- stay um, through the break, Telly. We're going to kind of get into some of those issues as well. You know, we put our hands over our hearts and we, we pledge to the flag and we, we pledge to our constituents, you know, but we need to take care of minimum wage increases. Just like you said, you know, equal pay for women. We're going to get into those when we come right back. This is Money Monday, y'all. This is Affects Your Pockets. We'll be right yes. back. Hello, WBOK listeners. This is Chuck Perkins, your Uptown Renaissance man. Join me every Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. to noon for the Midday Mashup. It's where we discuss everything from politics to poetry. Remember, the Midday Mashup's every Monday through Thursday from 11 a.m. until noon on WBOK 1230 a.m., where it's real talk for real times. LNR Security provides the good life. They make their mark in the security arena by providing excellent security services for more than 35 years and are licensed in more than 13 states. LNR Security's team comes with a wealth of experience from the military, law enforcement, and law enforcement training. Their personnel is comprised of more than 200 employees trained in video monitoring, special event services, convention services, armed and unarmed security guards, ticket takers, executive security, personal bodyguards, hall monitors, and and critical infrastructure personnel that are TSA trained. LNR security services are provided on a 24-hour basis and have expanded to the newest technology, including video monitoring. Find them on the web at www.lrsecurity.com or call them today at 504-943-3191. Again, that number is 504-943-3191. Live the good life with LNR Security today. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694 with a three-class starter pack starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Hello? I need help. My hair is a mess and my man texts me telling me to be ready for eight. He has a surprise. What am I going to do? My stylist takes forever. I got you. Call Ringlet Salon. I just left there. Where? Ringlet Salon. They took me within minutes and had me in and out in no time. Very professional and I scheduled online at ringlets.com. For real? Girl, for real. Does Ringlet Salon hook up your roots? Looks like I got a perm and you know I'm anti-chemicals. Ringlet Salon has my hair soft and bouncy. I'm getting the Brazilian blowout express next week it eliminates frizz for six weeks six weeks okay i'm all about ringlet salon where are they located ringlets has two locations one at 4712 paris avenue and 
one in the Hilton Hotel on the river. That location validates parking for four hours and is open on Sunday. Perfect for a working woman like me. That's all I needed to know. I'm going to be fresh for my man. You will if you schedule your appointment at ringlets.com. That's R-I-N-G-L-E-T-T-S dot com. Bye. Go and make my appointment with Ringlet Salon now. With more than 30 years of experience and dedication servicing New Orleans and Baton Rouge, Richard's Disposal provides dependable, non-hazardous solid waste collection and disposal services to residential, commercial, and industrial customers. We also provide recycling and portable toilets. At Richard's Disposal, we are known for our expertise and we're dedicated to our customers, all while utilizing the most advanced, environmentally friendly, and cost-effective methods possible. We strive to provide the latest solutions and technology to get the job done. At Richard's Disposal, we appreciate our customers one pickup at a time. Call us today at 504-241-2142. Richard's Disposal, community-focused, environmentally friendly. You're on the move and so is your bank. Liberty Bank now offers you the power to manage your money from the palm of your hand with mobile banking with Liberty Bank. Whether you need to check balances, transfer money, or view transactions, mobile banking at Liberty Bank allows convenient and secure access to your money. Enroll today at www.LibertyBank.net and download our mobile app. You can mobile bank at Liberty Bank to keep the power in your hands. Liberty Bank, there's freedom here. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. It's almost that time again, Bayou Classic time, and tickets are on sale now. Make sure you're in New Orleans as the Southern Jaguars and Grambling Tigers take over the Crescent City for the biggest classic weekend in the country. And who will take home the new trophy for the first time? You need to be there to find out who. It starts Thursday, November 26th at the Bayou Classic Thanksgiving Day Parade. On Friday, see the ultimate battle of the bands and Greek show. And on Saturday, the teams go head-to-head on the field at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Don't miss the 42nd annual Bayou Classic in November. Visit MyBayouClassic.com for more information and to purchase tickets. WBOK, 1230 AM, The People's Station. Welcome to the good life. Oh. Welcome to the good life. The wait is over. The wait is officially over. Good morning, good morning, and welcome, welcome to, to the, the good, good life. life. And the wait is officially over on so many levels, especially that Louisiana is now purple. We have John Bell Edwards as our governor-elect. We're excited for... New Orleans, we're excited for the entire state, we're excited for the region, and we're excited what this does for us nationally. I think it's kind of put Louisiana back on the map a little bit. You know, we kind of, in a positive way, exactly. I'm tired of being at the bottom of all the lists. You know, Louisiana is, is back in the conversation. I am here today with, um, a special co-host, Mason Harrison. He does all type of political, um, contributions for WBOK. And we're also on the line with my partner in politics, my partner in voting, my partner in block voting, my partner in making Louisiana Indiana, Purple, Telly Medina. And Telly, I really do want to thank you for being such a great partner. Um, we've been talking about this endlessly for months and months and months, and it's kind of come to fruition for us. So I'm really excited, you know, about what this has uh, done for the state of Louisiana. So I want to thank you personally from the bottom of my heart. Um, you absolutely are the good life, and I think um, people should really appreciate all of your knowledge and that you've imparted it to us for these months and really, you know, help people get encouraged to vote. And to speak to uh, your your knowledge, I have actually have a friend who wasn't a voter, and I'm sorry to say that, but she said she listened to the show with us one morning and she actually, you know, started looking at it from a different perspective. So what we do actually does touch people, you know, even if it's not something that, you know, gets you to go out now, but it plants the seed to open people's mind to living differently in the world. So I want to thank you for all that you've done in these past couple of months because Louisiana is purple. Now I wanted to kind of get into some more of those uh, issues that are really touching us. And so I want to open the lines again, 504-260-9265, if you want to get in on any of this conversation. We were discussing minimum wage increases and um, equality, uh, uh, e- equal pay before the break. And these are really some conversations that need to be had. And I'm going to jump in the lines because we have St- Stephen wanting to discuss the laws that are being passed. 
Stephen, welcome to The Good Life. I think he's coming up right now. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. But let's get into the minimum wage increase. How is, you know, Louisiana being purple right now? How does that look with regards to, you know, minimum wage increase? Are we going to get it? Because it was something that he talked about on the, the campaign trail. I, that's a tough one. And and this is what we – this is what we, we – we won the election, right? And that's a big deal. But as we would say to our elementary school kids, settle down now. Settle down. <laughs> we, all, all we did Recess is over. Was, win, was win one election. <laughs> President Obama was one election. Now that stuff is over, right? right? That was fine and dandy. But we still have a Republican legislature right. and a Republican Senate on both House and Senate side. So... We have to be realistic, even though that was a, that was a mandate. He won the race. I don't know about all that mandate part. He won the race, and that was significant. And he won the race against a terribly tattered and scorned U.S. senator. So now that that's over, if Vitter didn't have those issues, would John Bell have won? I'm not saying that it's not important that he did. I'm just being realistic about the state that we're in. So for your listeners, and for the individuals who care about what's going to happen during legislative session, we have to do more. When I joined the fraternity, the first thing that I learned was that it's harder being a brother than becoming one. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? You can't just vote, and that means that it's over. Oh, we want No, 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 no. That was one thing. Settle down, and let's figure out how, through Eileen Carter's The Good Life Show, how we get the listeners to write in in regard to the issue of minimum wage, what they think, and how we take those letters and get them to the legislators or mm-hmm. how we take them off our Facebook post and get them to the legislators so they can use it as proof that this is important. So I don't want people to think, oh, we did this one thing. That's all we did. And I'm not limited it. I'm saying that now we have to go to the next step. And the next step could very well be Facebook page. Let's take the letter. Okay. Get it to your state center. Let's start a letter writing campaign so they can use it as fuel when they're on the House and Senate floor saying this is what the people want. We need to hear from them more. Let's so go. let's not let's not just say that this one thing happened and that's it because that's definitely not true. All right, Telly, I'm about it. I'm sorry. I'm just being honest. No. <laughs> I love your honesty. And that's exactly what it's about because we talked about voting, but just like you, we've talked about for a month, it's not about one vote. It's about voting consistently for your, um, for your cause, for your efforts, for your, for your life, kind of. If you only vote during national elections, and a lot of progressives tend to do that for whatever reason, and you don't vote on those off-year elections, municipal, statewide, then you're doing it wrong. You're wrong. I'm just going to put it out there. You are absolutely wrong. Because, yes, the president can work with Congress and pass something like the Affordable Care Act. But thanks to 2012 Supreme Court decision, it is on the local level, the statewide level, where that is administered. Yes, we can pass um, fiscal relief, uh, as he did, or the stimulus package early in his uh, term. And But it's on the local level, right, how those dollars are allocated, when they're allocated. So once again, if you only vote during those national elections, then you're doing it wrong. You know, it's often said that in the public sector, your vote is your dollar. In the private sector, your dollar is your vote. Mm. So we are. Wait, wait, say that one more time. In the public sector, your vote is your dollar. In the private sector, your dollar is your vote. So we are very comfortable with walking away from companies and events uh, that don't serve us, whether it's Texaco, Avis, uh, Denny's, or Cracker. Cracker Barrel, whatever that place is called. <laughs> right. You know, we're all good about that. But um, showing up to vote is how your money is allocated, right? right. Those are your tax dollars that are being taken away, as, in, as it is the case with Medicaid expansion. But yet we're not getting a return on that investment, right? So these things are very, very important. People say, I don't pay attention to politics, but politics pays attention to you. And the people who understand how this game is played, those are the ones who get rich. Those are the ones who get the contract. Those are the ones who get the jobs. And the ones that don't understand are the ones that get played. Ooh, hello. We're going to go to the lines with that one. Steven, we have Steven on line two. Steven, welcome to The Good Life. We are here on Money Monday. I am here with Mason Harrison and my partner in voting, Telly Medina. Yeah, 
Good morning to you. Good morning. <laughs> oh, shoot, man. Mason, man, you took some more fire. <laughs> Go ahead, Steven. <laughs> you can build the fire no, up. But, but I would I, I, I add this. Like, like you said, um, I knew um, that Irene, you said it, it kind, kind of is your life. No, it is your life because cause everything that you can typically think of is uh, controlled by by local and 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 then you could go towards national because just like he just said um um some things that the president could do but um most of the things that affect you directly come strictly from local and state all politics is local all politics is local absolutely absolutely and, um, go ahead steve well, yeah, the, um the last thing I, i've that I always um, thought was a chip. Isn't it the chip that um, we got to have laws passed for um, for people to actually do things that's morally? They have to have laws passed for people to do things that are. Repeat that. I couldn't hear that. That's um, the chip that we have to pass laws for people to do, do things that that's morally right. That morally right. Absolutely, Stephen. Let me have the, the two gentlemen comment on that. Thank you so much for your call. Well, you can't legislate values, but you can certainly legislate people's behavior. Mm. Right? So I can't make you like me, but I can ensure that it is illegal for you to discriminate against me. All the more reason to show up at the polls. <laughs> right. So we can vote for president, but in those off-year elections, you have to vote for a Congress, right, right. that is going to advance that president's agenda. So once again, if you only vote in the big one, as I've heard people say, you're doing it wrong. Tell her your thoughts. Uh, I think tonight Eileen Carter yes. should go and fix her son food just for tonight. <laughs> she should skip feeding him tomorrow, <laughs> feed him again on Wednesday, skip feeding him on Thursday, feed him again on Friday. A- Aiden <laughs> would believe that that is not the good life. He's like, <laughs> I expect a consistent home cooked meals and my child doesn't like you know freezing meals he doesn't like those every you know and he yeah my child he likes food he doesn't and, and here's the best part he doesn't like bread i'm putting his business out there aiden doesn't like bread so he's not like you can't make me a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that is the okie doke i want you know exactly. chicken i want broccoli i want lasagna i want you know yeah. eggplant i want ooh, food yeah. oh your child need a part-time job my child likes <laughs> food yeah yeah he's like i don't want a sandwich i I want the real stuff. Go ahead, tell I'm, us. I'm saying that to say that if you choose to take a break, then what is your expectation? If we choose to blame someone else or take a break into what is going on in the city and say, that's not my child, it's not my responsibility, then 16 people get shot. Mm, right. Yeah. Funny friend. So, 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 so the expectation, not just voting, but if you're looking at voting as you're looking at raising your children, your future, what is going to happen? If you choose not to make an investment in eating, education, church, discipline, then what is your expectation of an outcome when you know what happens when you don't do it? You can't say that, oh, well, every time I've done it, it's worked. Well, that may be the case. Mason may have voted every single opportunity that he had since he was 18, and it's just for his lot in life. But if Mason's mama, auntie, cousin, grandma, all of those other people, and it may not necessarily be on his own, it may not be his responsibility to get all those individuals, but all of those individuals play a part of the whole because, as he just said, every 10 years we do a census. We do a census predicated upon the people who are registered. Right. That's the way that politicians look at you in a voting block. That's the reason we have those districts. The district is based off of the number of people who are there. But as a person who manages campaigns, I isolate it to only individuals who vote. That's right. And then that, that's how I make a determination on how to run the campaign. The campaign don't just get to run on me saying, freedom, guns, uh, <laughs> If, if, and the truth of the matter is, if all of the black people in the state of Louisiana was voting, then John Bell Letwood Mason, who is a communications person, can make John Bell Letwood say, you know what, we're going to do, we're going to have a DBE program in the state of Louisiana for 35% for minority and African American contractors mm-hmm. when I become your governor. But Mason will be able to craft that message and say that because he would know that black folks were going to vote. 
Hello. Well said. Well said. Very well said. Hey, we're going to go to the lines real quick. I have Eric on um, line two. Eric, welcome to The Good Life. Hey, God bless you all. How you doing? Good morning. God bless you. Yeah. We were in a bad situation Saturday that we had two candidates running for attorney general who had oh, past know. histories of being racist. Yeah. Um, oh. I'd like to ask you all, do you think the blacks have the will and desire to finance our own um, candidates so we aren't stuck in that position again? Hmm. I'm going to... Go ahead, I'll answer tell that question. Go ahead, I think us. that the the two, uh, with Jerry Broussard Baloney and what Ike, I believe the gentleman's last name was Ike Jackson, Ike Jackson. were the two candidates uh, who came in third and fourth place who are African American. I believe that Jerry Broussard Baloney uh, oh. uh, uh, supported Jeff Landry in the runoff. And I don't think Mr. Jackson, I think Mr. Jackson may have stayed out of the race. Oh. Um, the attorney general is an extremely important position. It's our lawyer, essentially, for the state. And that usually there are not a lot of investments that are made from everyday people because we don't know what that person does, quite honestly. Uh, mm-hmm. or we, but but it, it does affect our everyday life. Uh, I did not make a, a campaign donation in that particular race. Uh, and I will say that I, I, I have friends who worked for the Attorney General for Mr. Caldwell, uh, and, and they were good friends, and I had access and, and helped them. Uh, along the way, but we will need to make investments in every single race. If you have right. an expectation, um, good government is what's good for you. Uh, that is an old political expression. It may sound terribly bad, but if you don't make investments in a race or you don't give your money to a particular candidate to finance them, then it will be hard for you to have an expectation. Now, that's a lot of dollars to go around, but that's also uh-huh. this process as well. Yeah, because I think along with saying we should go out and vote, we have to tell people we have to go out and finance our candidates also. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to wrap think, up, but we're going to finish this conversation on next Monday. Eric, I want you to call in early next Monday. We want to finish this conversation. Telly will be back. Hopefully we'll maybe reel in Mason for a couple more times during the election right. cycle so we can really, you know, kind of bring the good life and, and back. Just like we, we started voting in blocks, but we really need to continue this so our voice is heard. And that's what the good life is all about. All right. we are, Thanks, thank you so much. So this is The Good Life. This is Money Monday. We all got into it. Thank you for turning Louisiana purple, but this is just the beginning. We need everyone to get out and vote on a consistent basis because we're going to plant that seed and we're going to grow it. That's The Good Life. I'm out.